Hello everyone, I'm Rahul Jadov, Engineering Lead for Acumox. Uh, I'll be talking about our journey of integrating Spiffy Identity for Cilium. Well, before I go into the details uh, of what that integration looks like, I uh, need to give a brief idea about what Cilium is. Uh, Cilium is a Kubernetes uh, native CNI which leverages eBPF uh, for networking observability and security. Uh, so eBPF allows uh, Cilium to insert uh, for dynamic insertion of control logic at runtime in the Linux kernel. Uh, using this, Cilium makes sure that you know it it can handle the network policy enforcement in a much more performant and scalable way. It does away with the use of IP tables, net filters, uh, which can ha very much limit the scale of operations that you can do if the number of nodes or pods increase beyond a particular limit, uh, the, 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 the number of IP table rules can uh, severely limit the kind of packet processing that you can handle in your network. Apart from that, Cilium has a unique concept of using identities for policy enforcement, for policy authorization. I'll talk about that in, this, in the next slide. With all this, Cilium allows uh, you to do advanced network policy enforcement. So Cilium allows you to have L3, L4, L7 based policy enforcement as well as it gives you detailed visibility into the flow level information uh, using which uh, you can uh, have advanced observability. Well, uh, the, 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 I need to talk about uh, Cilium's identity mechanism because that is 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 basically what I'll be comparing what Spiffy identity allows you to do. Uh, Cilium today has a notion of identity uh, in which a set of Kubernetes labels are mapped to a numeric identity. Uh, that numeric identity is then used in the eBPF data plane to enforce L3 L4 authorization, and this can be done on per packet basis. Since the authorization is done on per packet basis. Uh, the identity, you cannot have uh, Kubernetes labels as identities uh, in, in the kernel space. It's, it's just to, uh, it, 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 it has a significant performance overhead and it's, it, it might not be feasible to uh, manage that uh, control overhead in the kernel space. Uh, so for that, Cilium converts the label set into a numeric identity, which, is, which in turn is used for authorization in the kernel space. With this, Cilium does away with the use of IP tables and net filter. Obviously, once you have an intermediate mapping of this identity, it needs to be synchronized, uh, and the synchronization is achieved using KV store. Another advantage of using such kind of numeric identity in place of uh, IP addresses is first is it completely decouples your IP addressing from identity solution. And when the number of pods or number of nodes increases, uh, the number of rules that are used for policy enforcement do not increase exponentially. In case of IP tables based rules, if, if you have a single node increase, a single multiple pods are added to the, to, to the mix, the number of IP table rules can exponentially increase. This, 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 this particular problem is not faced by using IP table rules. Uh, so I need to compare at a high level the components of identity and how do uh, fundamentally Cilium identity and Spiffy identity differs and then I'll go into the integration uh, details of uh, integration challenges. Uh, so identity attributes and attestation that is the first component of any identity solution. In case of Cilium of course uh, Kubernetes labels have been made use of. There is no explicit uh, attestation procedure there. Uh, Kubernetes itself, the Kubernetes control plane takes care of uh, Kubernetes labels management and that is uh, that is essentially uh, leveraged by Cilium as well. Uh, with, in case of Spiffy, Spiffy has a Kubernetes uh, plugin which allows it to uh, attest for Kubernetes labels and uh, other aspects of Kubernetes. But that attestation logic can in turn be extended to uh, handle other, other information such as other attributes such as container attributes, it could be container image name or location for example, location of the cluster. Uh, these attestation uh, there is an explicit attestation to verify these attributes. Then there is identity mapping. Helium maps the identity to a random unsigned integer and this mapping is kept as part of KV store. Uh, thus, there is a synchronization that this implies that there is a synchronization involved. Uh, even in case of Spiffy, Spiffy ID is essentially Spiffy URI. 
uh, which is part of X509 certificates or JOT tokens. Uh, in case of SPIFP, because of the attestation logic, there is a separate control plane uh, involved. In case of Celium, there is no separate control plane. The, spy, uh, the Kubernetes uh, control plane itself serves as a control plane for uh, Celium identity. When it comes to identity, carrying the identity across uh, to, to across the peers, uh, Celium achieves it by making sure that the IP cache, which is a, which is a mapping table to map pod IP to identity, uh, is, is been made use of. This this IP cache is the one which uh, which is used by the peers to identify the uh, identity of the remote entity. In case of Spiffy, MTLS handshake is used. At the end of MTLS handshake, both the peers know uh, each other's identity in the uh, which is carried as part of the certificates identity derivatives uh, does the id allocation results in any derivatives uh, such as tokens or credentials which in turn can be used for other purposes such as authentication and encryption in case of celium there is no such uh, no such derivatives the celium uh, celium identity mechanism can be used only for celium policy authorization in case of SPIFI, X509 certificates are provisioned and these X509 certificates are tokens could, could in turn be made use of for other purposes such as uh, it could be used as uh, credentials for IPsec or WireGuard tunneling. Uh, what was our need for uh, SPIFI? The, our primary use case was that we didn't want uh, our solution to be binded towards uh, Kubernetes only. Uh, we wanted a consistent identity that can span across ecosystem, not just Kubernetes workloads. In the example given below, I'm, I'm sure I've shown IoT Edge, 5G, uh, bare metal and virtual machine, and we could we wanted to also federate our identity solution with third-party service providers. Spiffy gives us that flexibility that we can think of all these scenarios in the future. Uh, there is a so uh, the other point is that we want a common identity solution that we could leverage across all the policy enforcement engines. We have several policy enforcement engines. It, it does a network in the form of Celium systems, as well as data policy uh, enforcement engine. We wanted to make sure that there is a single identity base covering all three of them. And some advanced use cases such as use of TPMs of enclaves for secure attestation. These are, uh, these are a nice use cases which are required by uh, some of the deployments and th Essentially, Spiffy allows you to have plugins or the flexibility to have plugins to do such kind of security stations. Now, I'll jump into the integration challenges. Uh, so, uh, Spiffy is already integrated with most of the service meshes out there, for example, Istio. Uh, while all the service meshes have one thing in common, most of them operate in a sidecar model, which means that the Envoy process, Envoy proxy, is located as part of the user pod. In this case, Envoy can attest on behalf of the workloads because it is part of the same C groups. Uh, in case of Celium, Celium deploys Envoy in a very different model. It uses a node singleton model, wherein uh, there is just a single Envoy proxy on the whole node. All the user pods will redirect its traffic, and the redirection of that traffic is handled through eBPF uh, logic. So essentially, this is a sub significant design change when it comes to how Cilium is deployed and this had major implication on Spiffy integration for us. So what the implications of an Envoy node singleton model used by Cilium, the first is that the Spire's Kubernetes workload attestation model currently expects that the attestation APIs could be called only from the same C groups of, that, of the workload. In case of Istio, Envoy is part of the same pod as that of uh, the workloads being a sidecar model. So it is able to attest, use the attestation APIs. But in case of Celium, uh, Envoy is no more co-located within the workload pods and thus it has no access to C groups. Uh, this led uh, to the use of, or to, 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 to the development of uh, delegated identity APIs. A delegated identity APIs is what allows a privileged process I'll talk about what privilege process means. Uh, it, it allows a privilege process to fetch SVID on behalf of the workloads process outside the C group. So in this case, the Cilium agent is a privileged process and Cilium agent could request uh, SVIDs on behalf of the workloads from the Spire agent. 
Now, how do you ensure? So these are high security risk APIs. So how do you ensure appropriate API access to this? So what are the guardrails that a user of such APIs needs to put in? First is uh, only the node local node uh, local access is allowed for these APIs by making use of a simple Unix domain sockets. Uh, the caller has to be registered with Spire agent. Uh, that is a that is a requirement here. And one should ensure that as a user of these APIs, one should ensure that the selectors to be used for attestation by this privileged process should be uh, should be only that privileged process who should be able to attest for that those selectors. This is something that the user of this API is, uh, should keep in mind. So given below is the details of how this delegation API is, is provisioned. So in this case, the Cilium agent is marked as a authorized user for the delegation APIs. And in this case, you can see that the Cilium agent is a child uh, child ID for the parent ID of the uh, of parent spiffy ID of this Spire agent. Uh, using spiffy ID for L3, L4 authorization. Now, in most cases, in, in all the service meshes, uh, the spiffy ID is used for L7 authorization. Uh, in case of Cilium, we wanted to make sure that we use the same spiffy ID for even L3, L4 authorization. The one design rationale that we we decided to use was when the, C, when the Cilium agent gets retrieves a suite on behalf of the workload, the Cilium agent will in turn create a Kubernetes label on behalf of, based on that SWIT on behalf of the workload. Now what this means is that once the spiffy attestation uh, uh, re registration is done, you have SWIT and as well as the Kubernetes labels for the corresponding workloads. These, this Kubernetes label in turn can be made use of for L3 L4 authorization. Uh, Given here is an example which shows that you can use match labels uh, construct to specify the spiffy ID and you can have your L3, L4 authorization based on this. So this is very different. So the L3, L4 authorization is very different from secure uh, service mesh uh, solutions which only do L7. Other use case for us was to ensure that all the non-secure connections are upgraded to secure connections uh, we we are primarily a zero trust uh, security solution. Uh, we we want to ensure that all the workloads, all the east-west traffic is also secure uh, traffic. O obviously, as part of Spiffy, one of the advantages is that you get certificate provision for the workload. We could use this certificate for TLS origination and termination. Given here is an example of a policy uh, which could be used for TLS origination and termination. So here, a typical uh, X-Wing that star example is being made use of. X-Wing and that star, both of them are unsecure application, which means that they use HTTP for communication. The Envoy proxy will uh, transparently upgrade the connection to a secure connection and use uh, Spiffy certificate for authentication purpose here. Other perks of using Spiffy, uh, of course, uh, Spiffy has an integrated certificate management solution. That's a big plus. It, it integrates with other CA providers, which essentially has, allows us to federate with a third party service providers. Uh, another point is that while we, we are a security solutions providers and we have a SaaS environment, uh, multi-tenant SaaS environment. We want to make sure that there is a hard isolation across multiple tenants and uh, some of the concepts of Spire such as nested Spire allows us to do that hard isolation of resources. Uh, Spire readily integrates work with vaults for secret management. That is a big plus for us. And the developer community is, is, is extremely vibrant. Uh, the kind of design discussions we had on Slack, the kind of design discussions we had on good GitHub pull requests were amazing. And it was, it, it, it was very fun to uh, interact with this developer community. To sum up, uh, Spiffy does provide a strong identity base, flexible for all the scenarios, and there are certain advantages of integrating Spiffy natively in Cilium. One of the advantages that I've already mentioned is, apart from L7 authorization, you can still have L3, L4 authorization also as well, uh, as well based on the same Spiffy ID. Uh, well, the integration that we did didn't have any impact on the data path, the EPP of data path handling for Cilium, that's a big plus. That means that there is no additional control over it that is inserted by this identity solution. Uh, uh, Spiffy now supports delegation identity APIs. The user should be very cautious of making use of these APIs because these are high-risk APIs. Mm -hmm. You should make sure that you, the, the processes which can access these APIs make use of appropriate suitable selectors. 
only the privilege process uh, uh, could, could request estimates on behalf of the workloads. And uh, of course, the privilege process needs to be on the same node, uh, but not in the same pod. What are some of the next to do's for Cilium? One is uh, to make use of the same SPIFI provision certificates for IPsec and WireGuard. That is still not done. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, we are hoping that in the future, uh, we could as well integrate with JOT tokens apart from X509 service that we have. We have integration as well. Well, credits, many thanks to all the code contributors and the reviewers. Uh, uh, we had extremely good reviews from both the Spire and Cilium community. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working more closely with these teams uh, to get uh, you get the PR uh, handle. <clears throat> all the work item, all the work that is done in the context is available in the open source, including all the design documents. There is a GitHub repo for Cilium Spire tutorials, which allows you to deploy uh, the images, uh, Cilium Spiffy integrated images, and try out the policy uh, examples that are given in the slides in, in those tutorials. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Any questions?